With the protests in France heating up, I'm reminded of the many prophecies from mystics and saints of the Church who have forewarned that the coming chastisements will begin with France. I will cover several prophecies in this video, however, I think that Blessed Marie Julie Jehenny has the most detailed prophecies concerning what is to come. I've covered her messages throughout my videos in the past couple of years. France is very significant to the restoration of the Church and peace in the world. Why? It is said that towards the end of the tribulation, the monarchy in France will be restored, and a great monarch will come to aid France in their sorrow. He will join forces, if you will, with a prophesied angelic pontiff, and together they will free France and help restore and liberate the church from the hands of her enemy. Now who the great monarch will be, I will cover in another video. What exactly is going to occur? When will it happen and how long will it last? Our Lord and our beautiful Mother always forewarn us. They have given us insight through their chosen souls as to what is going to occur. France will suffer a massive civil war in which old men will take up arms due to the advance of communism in their country at the hands of their government. We are seeing this more than ever clearly come to pass. Now it's no coincidence that many of the Blessed Mothers and even our Lord's apparitions stem from France. France is considered the eldest daughter of the Church. It received that title when on December 25th, 486 AD, King Clovis was baptized in the Cathedral of Reims. This would mark the entry of the Frankish Kingdom into the Catholic Church. And on June 17th, 1689, our Lord requested through St. Margaret Mary for the consecration of France to his Sacred Heart. St. Margaret Mary wrote several letters to King Louis XIV letting him know what heaven had requested. These requests were ignored and 100 years later to the date, the King of France was removed from power by Masons who instigated what is known today as the French Revolution. They removed the monarchy and God from society. It was not until he was in prison that King Louis XVI consecrated France to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, but it was too late. And as a result of that, religion and the belief, of, belief in God declined. It made room for atheism and vices of all kinds. Because of this, our Lord has revealed that France will be purified for its crimes. Now, in a prophecy dated December 8, 1874, our Lord revealed to Blessed Marie Julie Jehenny, he said, quote, In Rome, the storm will be the blackest. The storm of Rome is even worse than the storm in France. All the wrath of the ungodly is in Rome. All the anger of the wicked is focused on the Holy See. But the chastisements will begin with Paris. And on another prophecy dated February 18, 1876, our Lord continues to warn. He said, France will be punished first before the monarchy is restored. Where are you, poor France, lost sheep, misled? Yet it is you who must expect the first, that is the first of the punishments, since it is you who must deliver the church, end quote. And according to Blessed Anna Marie Taiji, she said, France shall fall into a frightful anarchy. The French people should have a desperate civil war in which old men themselves shall take up arms. Now already we are seeing the beginning of this prophecy being fulfilled. There are massive protests going on in France right now due to Macron raising the retirement age, but it goes so much deeper than that. We also see that he is praising communist China and turning his back on his allies. Now in another prophecy dated August 22nd, 1882, the Blessed Mother revealed to Blessed Marie Julie Jehenny, she said, quote, Before the punishment of my adorable son falls over the land of France, there will be many souls who will lose the faith. This land will be covered with masses of guilty men who, from the bottom of the lodges, will work to glorify Satan, to raise him places of worship in the greater part of France, end quote. CatholicEducation.org states, quote, it is widely known that the French Revolution of 1789 has its links to Freemasonry. In France in 1877 and in Portugal in 1910, they took control of the government for a time and enacted laws to restrict the activities of the church, particularly in education. 
In Italy, the movement in the mid-1800s to unify the country was infiltrated by Freemasons who were intent on abolishing the papacy and restricting the rights of the Catholic Church. In Latin America, Freemasons have expressed anti-church and anti-clerical sentiment. Without doubt, one reason why Western Europe suffers from its present secularism is because of the role of masonry since the 19th century." End quote. And we see in the Alta Vendita, which is the Masons' blueprint for the subversion of the Catholic Church, they say, quote, Our ultimate end is that of Voltaire and of the French Revolution, the final destruction of Catholicism and even of the Christian idea. In time, the mindset will be so pervasive that priests would be ordained, bishops would be consecrated, cardinals would be nominated whose thinking was in step with the modern thought rooted in the French Revolution's Declaration of the Rights of Man and other principles of 1789. Eventually, a pope would be elected from these ranks who would lead the church on a road of enlightenment and renewal." End quote. And we can see that the current head of government in France has adopted this concept. Take a listen. Fair game. The story is about how France and its frenemy Britain persecuted a journalist, a French publisher who opposed Macron's pension plan. It's got illegal surveillance, terror charges, and police overreach. Everything that would guarantee criticism from foreign offices in Paris and London. Except this time, they are the culprits. According to our Lord, the Blessed Marie Julie Jeheni, the government will instigate the war and what our Lord calls a red revolution, whereby some of the priests will betray Christ and write a letter to the people of France stating that the laws of the government, the laws of communism, are right. This will then instigate a schism in the church. He said, quote, My children, you will read many letters written by the priests of France as not disapproving of the laws of the government. The bond of faith, seeing the empirical sight of these bad luminaries, will make a call of faith to the French clergy. As he told them, Take the faith as a weapon and shield. With it you will overcome all that is opposed to the ecclesiastical law. There are those who will respond to his call, but not all. Many remain in the wrong way, and the true priests will be very small in number. My children, the Lord, who sees an innumerable loss of Christian souls, is at this moment making all effort to show the peril and the severity of the times to those who will build on the rock of revolution, a red revolution. In a prophecy dated November 23, 1882, our Lady revealed to Blessed Marie Julie Jeheni, quote, All the workers whose employment provided a daily occupation that prevented them from engaging in evil. The designs of those who rule France have resolved to remove from the worker all work, all employment, end quote. Now with everything sort of coming together, all the prophecies lining up, this does not seem so far-fetched. With all that happened with COVID-19 and the lockdowns throughout the world and all the workers who could not provide for their families, all the businesses that were closed and all the protests going on in France now, clearly something more is coming. And as I said before, it goes much deeper than what we are seeing. And on June 1st, 1877, our Lord revealed that there will be a planned conspiracy which will launch the revolt. He said, quote, the wicked, the profane, the consciences without remorse are hatching the most blackest conspiracy that France would never have imagined without the breath of the infernal spirit. From this infernal project will be drawn all the wicks that will light up the spirit of revolt and attract terrible punishments. For a long time, the usurpers have hidden a violet fire, a fire half discovered under the walls of the great city of Paris. As soon as a little bit of breath is brought on these purple sparks, at once they will form burning infernos that will devour homes and kill many people. Know well that these men without faith, who do not desire anything but disorder and death, use the powder derived from the coals of hell. My children, there will be no more rest, night and day. The agitators are engaged in evil, fire, horrible murder. They will use the violent powder 
to reduce into shreds the strongest walls ever built on the earth, end quote. But when will this happen? In a prophecy dated April 27, 1877, our Lord said, quote, The cries of the earth of despair will rise to heaven, the precious month of the sacred heart, which is June, and that of the precious blood, which is July, will be two months filled with terror. Only blasphemies will be heard there. It will be the signal of the chastisements, the signal of a civil war. When the governments will see the turmoil and rebellion, it will be like a bird. It will take flight and go to another country, and France will be free in the revolution. The first uprising will be in the city of Paris, and the throne of bad kings will collapse as the city and its victims will die within its walls. Many times the flames and the fire were shown in this criminal city, but this time it will be a hail of fire that will smother the culprits. Here they will violate the tabernacles. Here they will pursue the fathers of the church with rage. Many will not come out. Many will not escape. I will receive the blood of the martyrs to aid the true French to obtain the victory. End quote. In another prophecy dated April 20th, 1882, our Lord revealed, quote, The military will be removed from France and the security forces will be reduced. It is during this troubled period, infamous laws will be enacted that, among other things, establish a control of power over religion, then enslaving the clergy to the revolutionary power, persecuting all opposition, cutting all ties with the hierarchy in Rome. Revolutionaries will introduce the implementation of a totalitarian regime with, the, with its expeditious justice of the opponents, surveillance denunciations, this on top of famine, due to the deficient crop and the calamities. Torrential rains drawing away big delays in agriculture will be one of the signs, forerunners of this revolution. I will advise my friends through the signs of nature. I will warn them." End quote. We were also warned that the chastisements in France will have three different phases. Our Lord revealed to Blessed Marie Julie, quote, the first is the extent of the evils of the eldest daughter of the church, the second is the church invaded and the beginning of the terrible struggle in the eternal city. This struggle in the eternal city will languish five months without the sad consequences to the point of death only worse. And Blessed Marie Julie commented, quote, First crisis in France, some time ago the Lord has marked three months of fatal and terrible punishment. He cut it short a lot. The beginning of the next deadly revolutionary crisis will last four weeks but the extent will be immense. The number of those so-called murderers of the people will be of an inconceivable immensity. In this terrible hour, foreigners whose desire is filled with a violence that is uncontrollable will be masters in France. Upon the news of the fatal event, their heirs will not be deaf. During the first fight in the whole extent of France, there will be freedom for all. There will be no captives held in for crimes. Okay, so let's do a recap. We know that the Civil War will have three crisis periods. The first will be the actual Civil War, which will begin in Paris. This will last approximately three months. It will begin in um, June and July. Now, I'm not saying that it is this June and July. It could be next year. It could be the following year. But things are definitely heating up. So we, we see a progression. Um, and during that period as well, the church will be persecuted. So bishops and priests who remain faithful to the church will be martyred as well as imprisoned. And the apostate bishops and priests will break away from Rome, uh, create a schism, and form an apostate state religion. The second crisis period will be invasion of foreigners into the country. We do know through prophecy that Russia will invade the country. Um, as well as other foreigners. And the foreigners that are living in the country as well will provoke um, attacks, terrorist attacks, and those sort of things. Now, this phase will last approximately four weeks. The third crisis period will be a continuation of the invasion. And it will be during this third period when the great monarch will arrive. St. John Vianney said, quote, the French will be divided into two parties, one against the other. The Prussians will allow the burning of Paris and will rejoice in it, 
but they will be beaten and driven entirely from France. Our enemies shall return and destroy everything in their march. They will arrive near Poitiers without serious resistance, but there they will be crushed by the defenders of the West who will pursue them. In other directions, their provisions will be cut off and they will suffer serious losses. They will attempt to flee to their country, but won't reach it. All they took from us shall be returned and a great deal more. The communists of Paris after this defeat will spread throughout France and will multiply. Then they seize arms and oppress people of order. A civil war breaks out everywhere and these wicked people become masters in north, east and southwest of France. They imprison many persons and massacre many. They attempt to kill all priests and religious, but this does not last. People will imagine that all is lost, but the good God will save all. But God shall save all like a sign of the last judgment. End quote. Now that last part, God shall save all like a sign of the last judgment, sounds exactly like the warning or illumination of conscience. Um, I'm sure many of you are, are familiar with that. If you are not, I will do a video on that as well. This is also confirmed by Saint Miriam Bouardi when she said, quote, there will be a bad government in France. The religious will be hunted. It will take leagues to confess. The Germans will return to France, but they will be crushed. We will be forced to say God's finger is there. Yes, yes, soon France will triumph. Soon she will be the queen of kingdoms. She did too much good in the missions for God to abandon her." End quote. While there are so many prophecies that I can mention, ultimately, in the end, France will be liberated. However, Paris will be no more. At what is known as the apparitions of Tilly, in Tilly, France, the Blessed Mother and our Lord appear to Marie Martel. This apparition is approved by the church. In January of 1897, Our Lady said, quote, O Paris, Paris did not respect the laws of my divine son. It will be punished and destroyed by fire. There will be few people who will remain. Those who remain will not recognize themselves. Paris will be destroyed by fire if it refuses to convert. This is the punishment that is reserved for it." End quote. And our Lord said to Marie, Marie Martel, quote, France is guilty. She will be punished and punished. It takes blood to repair the outrages with which my heart is showered. France is making a huge wound to my heart. She does not content herself. She enlarges it every day. Pray, my children, come near my tabernacle." End quote. And our Blessed Mother also confirms this at La Salette, when she said, quote, France, Italy, Spain, and England will be at war. Blood will flow in the streets. Frenchmen will fight Frenchmen. Italian will fight Italian. A general war will follow, which will be appalling. For a time, God will cease to remember France and Italy because the gospel of Jesus Christ has been forgotten. Paris will burn and Marseilles will be engulfed." End quote. Father John Nectu, who died in 1777, was known as a saint and a prophet. Many of his prophecies have come to pass. He also prophesied of a time during the tribulation, as well as the civil war in France. He said, quote, during this revolution, which will be general and not confined to France, Paris will be so completely destroyed that 20 years later, the fathers will walk in its ruins with their children, who will ask them what was there. They will answer, my child, it was once a great city, which God destroyed because of his crimes." End quote. To say that we have been warned is an understatement. Let us heed heaven's warnings, repent, turn back to God before we see the complete fulfillment of these prophecies. Remember, heaven always gives us a remedy, a solution. It is up to us to listen. Prayer, fasting, repentance. God bless you all. Thank you for watching, and as always, to Jesus through Mary.